But the question is, does that framework of multiculturalism and diversity get us to the core of the problem? And here's where I want to suggest we use some different language. Instead of a generic sounding race problem, let's move to what the real problem around race is still today in 2009, which is racism. And here, I want to ask uh, what may seem like a simple and even obvious question. Where does racism come from? From what roots does racism arise? And I think that question also is a simple answer. It comes from white supremacy. Right? The idea that non-white people are inherently inferior in intellectual or moral terms from white folks. Right? That's what we call white supremacy. Now, uh, let's ask a simple question. Who came up with the idea of white supremacy? Did black and brown people come up with the idea that they were inherently inferior to white people? No, I don't think so. That's a notion that comes from the white community. Now, when we talk about the modern conception of racism and white supremacy, we're talking about an idea that comes out of Europe about five to 600 years ago. Right? It comes out of Europe just about the time Europe was doing what? Going about the business of subjugating the rest of the world, especially those parts of the world that were not white. So we can see that the core problem is not some abstract race problem, but the problem of white supremacy. We can see where white supremacy comes from. It comes from white folks. So while Du Bois was obviously he was right in, in having to confront the way that the society he lived in saw him as a problem, he also understood that he wasn't the problem. And in fact, that question, how does it feel to be a problem, should have been turned onto the white people in his world. In other words, instead of white people asking Du Bois, how does it feel to be a problem, he should have been asking them, how does it feel to be a problem, because the idea of white supremacy comes out of their community, out of their world. So white people created a white supremacist society, and therefore, by definition, white people are the root of the problem. Now that was a century ago, and the question is, what about today? How do we deal with these same questions today? How do we, first of all, describe the United States today? And I'm going to make the argument that it's best to describe the United States today, still, as a white supremacist society. Again, even in a post-apartheid civil rights era in which the legal structures of discrimination have been eliminated, I'm going to argue it's still appropriate to talk about the United States as a white supremacist society. What do I mean by that? Because that, as you are well aware, is not a claim that goes over easy in the United States. Go out into the world, make that claim, and you'll get a lot of pushback, yes? Okay.